G'day, I'm Benny Stitch. Um, today we've got a little bike seat pad to do. So I um, thought I'd just run you through a bit of the process of how I trim up a bike seat. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy. So here you are, we've got the pad here. It's just off a little Japa Harley bike. So well, we're gonna do it in uh, this stuff here. So we've got black leatherette. Uh, we're going to end up putting some white lacing through it and white stitching. So um, so this is pretty much the base uh, we use. So I've done a couple of little foam repairs on this seat. Um, normally I draw the design up on the actual seat itself, you know, lines running through or whatever I'm going to do. But um, I've already done the main part of the seat, so I already know what I'm doing with this one. So I'm literally just going to mark it out and, uh, and get it happening. So, yeah. So I've already got my bit of vinyl. Uh, rough cut, so pretty much lay it on there, make sure it's the right size. Um, and then what I'll do is start pinning it out. So these are just pins, you know, like dressmaking pins. Um, and what you want to do is find you, where your stitch line is going to sit, um, basically um, pin it, start pinning it along that line. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty basic, but this is like any sort of trade or anything like that, or any project that you undertake, the preparation is the key, so you want to get this part right before you um, go too far ahead of yourself. So I'm just uh, pinning this up. Another little trick I try to do as well, saves a little bit of time at the end is, but everywhere I have a line up mark. So these line up marks are used when you have your separate panels, when you go to sew them back together, that you know that you're sewing them together in the correct, uh, correct way. So because sometimes when you sew stuff, you'll pull it one way or another, or they'll have two different stretch rates. So they'll tend to, to move away from where they should be. So your line up marks keep, keeps everything true. But the little trick is, when you pin your panel out, is you put your pins in where you have your line-up marks. So that way when you go to mark your panel out, so what you do then is you grab your pencil or your trinograph and you mark along your edge. But if you have pinned where your line-up marks are, it makes it very easy to transfer your marks. So definitely a um, little time-saving trick there. Um, so you're marking around like that. Obviously you're going to have to pin it where you don't have your line-up marks, but if you are uh, you bring them in where they are, definitely saves a bit of time. So one thing is always keep your, keep your panel flat. Um, you want a, a bit of tension on it when you're marking it out, you don't want it too loose. Uh, and on the same, same note, you don't want to stretch crap out of it. So again, you, you know, when you go and transfer your, transfer your marks. So with that, basically what I'm doing is I'm just pulling it down and you can see where the edge of the foam is. And you want to run your stitch line across the apex of that, that curve. Um, that way you, you know, your seam's going to sit nice, be on a nice sort of round edge. So this is just rough markings at this point. What I'll do after I've done this is I'll actually take it off and, uh, and, and mark my edges uh, like with a ruler, um, and then, which I'll show you later, um, I'll make sure that it's even from side to side. Um, just looks a lot better, especially if you're using alternate colour stitching or, or you've got two different coloured vinyls that you're using or letters. Um, if you have variances in your shape from side to side, it'll really stand out. So um, I will show you that in a second. So we've almost got this pinned out now. You can sort of take a bit of a guess, um, you know, when you 
when you get good enough as to, to where your line is. I've done probably three or four hundred bike seats in my career, so um, I yeah, this is sort of second nature for me, a lot of this stuff. Um, but you know, if you're doing it yourself, take the time. This is the most important part, really. Um, if you don't get it right now, the end product's going to turn out like crap, so um, definitely take your time now. Make sure you're marking out. Okay, cool. So we've got our panel off the uh, off the foam. Um, so I can already tell that it's not quite even from side to side. Um, so what I'll now do is find the center line and I'll neaten up, you know, these lines here. I make sure they have nice, even flowing curves. Uh, make sure the straight parts are straight like they're meant to be, um, and then I will. Um, trim it all up and make sure it's, it's even both sides and um, then we'll proceed on to the next step. So what I'm doing now basically is using a ruler to draw my stitch line. Um, I even use a ruler to go around curves. Uh, it just makes it nice and even. Um, Sometimes when you're marking out, you'll have bits that go in and out and in and out. Obviously, you don't want the your stitch line to follow that, so you want a nice, smooth, even line um, around your piece. That's why I use a ruler. It just gives you really nice, nice lines. So basically, what I'll do is I'll, I'll sort of work between two or three points um, and make sure that it's a nice, smooth line, pretty much. Uh, it's not rocket science, but it definitely, definitely makes a difference um, if you do it properly. So now that's, that line there is actually the stitch line. So what we want to do is we want to add our sewing allowance on, which is 10 mil. Um, I cut it by eye now because I've just been doing it for so long, but if you're new to, to doing this sort of stuff, you can mark your 10 mil and then cut along that line. It's really personal preference. Um, but yeah, I've been doing it long enough that I could just gut it. Um, so yeah, you wanna cut 10 mil off that stitch line. Like I said, this, this uh, panel is not even both sides. So I will actually end up um, cutting a bit out of this, which I'll show you shortly. So now that you've got your basic shape, what I actually do is notch, notch out my line up marks. So this is just a little sheep's ear clipper. And I've got eBay, I'm sure there's other places you can buy it, but eBay is good for me. So you just, yeah, notch all those out. Then what you want to do is lightly mark your center line. Right, so everything is going to be based off this center line. You only want to mark it lightly because if this isn't going to be an actual stitch line, it's going to have to get cleaned off later. So you want to just do it lightly. Um, yeah, so that it's easy to clean off. Especially with, uh, with China Graph and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, definitely. Just do all your markings lightly, China Graph. That's the general rule. 
I don't want anything to mark on the material. Um, last thing I want to do is we spend an hour cleaning the thing when you finished it. Um, so yeah, so I, I had already gone ahead and worked out all my measurements for this job. So what I'll do now is just transfer them all over. And um, yeah, then I'll get the sewn. So these are actually going to be physical stitch lines. So again, you want to mark light, but you want to be able to see see where you're stitching. So you can be a little bit heavier handed on this, but again, it depends what thread uh, thread you're using as well. So um, this is going white thread. Um, so it's okay on black vinyl because you, you can use white trinograph, but if you're doing a white bike seat or a white cover, um, you know, you generally will use pencil or even a coloured trinograph to do your markings. And um, with a white thread, it's, it's not very forgiving when it comes to marking, so um, you gotta be careful what you use because once white thread gets stained, it's almost impossible to, to clean it up. It's really a pain in the butt, so. So that's gonna be my four physical stitch lines. So what I'll do now is I actually put foam on this panel and, uh, and stitch it up, so yeah, that's the next step. Okay, so you can see now we've uh, sewn our border onto the face and we've done the top stitch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some eyelets through the center here. I've got some little white eyelets we're going to put in there. Um, then I'm actually going to do some white leather lacing through the center. So um, yeah, stay tuned for the next bit. So you can see we've got our marks there where our eyelets are going to go. So the next step is to uh, punch them all in and uh, yeah, I'll uh, show you the process of that.
Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Stay tuned for more.